Okay, so here we go again, right? Fixing things I shouldn't have to fix. So yesterday I just started mowing my lawn. I was about 40 minutes into it. And my engine just started revving up like crazy. Um, way beyond what it should for having a built-in um, throttle control based on the governor. And I noticed when I was looking down to see what was going on, that on the top of my carburetor here, which is a little dirty, deal with it, the um, the uh, butterfly valve, the mechanism up here was just kind of, it was just bouncing around in there. And I, th I was like, what? So I shut it off. And, uh, you know, I looked down in through the choke side here. And I, I took the air valve and I looked down in the choke. And when I looked through, that's what I saw. Right? Like, I saw straight through. I didn't see that little butterfly valve in there. I didn't see nothing. And then when I grabbed onto the, the pivot pin up here on the top with the throttle mechanism, it kind of like came halfway out and I was like, oh crap. So I'm thinking, hopefully I didn't suck it in. Well, I didn't. Okay, so here I am taking it apart. Now granted, okay, so this is all plastic. Like this whole thing is plastic. Every last little freaking bit of it is plastic. Plastic, 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 plastic. What do you got a metal spring right here? Blah, 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 metal. They look at, they put a brass butterfly in there, brass butterfly valve in there. But none of the rest. So that's the only brass part. So what I want you to look at is this. Okay. Here's my problem. There's the choke. Okay. As you can see, the choke butterfly valve is sandwiched between the shaft there. So what they did was they cut a small notch down in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. They cut a small notch on one side. So when they press the pin down through the hole here, they could capture this valve in between the plastic. Right? Like a clothespin, basically. It kind of kind of V's around it like that, okay? Now, what happened with this guy? Well, ba-dang, that broke. It broke. I'm missing half of my pivot shaft here. So, um, I got to fix this because I got to have a mower, and I'm not going to go and buy a carburetor kit for a, the same price as a brand new mower, and I've only had this mower for like two and a half years now, so three seasons, which is nothing. Um, so, how am I going to fix this? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I have taken my, and I just want to focus, I've taken my, um, come on now, there it goes. So I took my coping saw here, and I cut a little notch down in there, the very bottom there, I don't know if you can see that or not, it doesn't want to focus very well. Um, yeah, there we go. So I cut a little notch down in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of stainless steel. I have a piece of stainless steel that I'm going to wedge in this little groove here. And the hopes is that when I drop the butterfly valve down into the carburetor that I can encapsulate it again, capture it between those, those two flat surfaces there, and help pinch this in there so that I have a functioning carburetor. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so here's where we're at. So, you remember I mentioned I cut the slot in this, the carburetor pivot here. Okay, so I also went ahead and, let's come this way. Um, if you can see here, I flat spotted it on the sides here. So it's the same thickness here. If you look at this angle, it kind of flares out a little bit. So I flattened that piece off on both sides. And then I made this little guy here out of a thin piece of brass. So it's a little T-shape. Right, I rounded it over. Let's see if you can see that. Got a little crap in the background there. There we go. So I rounded it over. I folded the tip over so it's a little bit thicker there in the tip. And so the idea now is that this little guy, right, is going to go down in the slot here. So it's going to go down in the slot here like that. Okay. Like that. And then these little ears here are going to wrap around the shaft and hopefully be inside the diameter of this. That's that's the plan. I'm, I'm, I'm going to mic it. I'll check it with the, the micrometer here in a second. But uh, that's where we're at. And then that idea there is that little brass spring now, if you look, is going to now be my catchment for the brass washer. So I'll have to adjust the tension on this thing so that it sits out just enough to where I can kind of you know, get, get a little bit of a bend out so that I can kind of slip over the washer here like the original plastic one did. Um, but first, I got to get it crimped on there and see how she fits. Okay. So there we go. 
I got it in place, I've got it crimped in and around, and I made just enough space now so that it the pivot shaft actually seats down in there like it's supposed to. So you can see I got a good seat on the carburetor, and I have movement inside the housing here. It's nice smooth movement like it's supposed to be. So now I gotta try to just capture the uh, brass butterfly valve in there. And then hopefully we'll have a successful fix on this plastic uh, foreign carburetor. Okay, so here we go. I got the spring clamp, if you would, tuned up now. So I've got it, um, come on now. There we go. So I got the spring clamp tuned up there. You see it's got kind of an S shape to it. So it kind of tangs out there in the front a little bit and then it kind of bulges in the back. And there's a reason for that, because this little guy here has to slide into that groove. Um, you can see here I kind of, I actually punched out uh, the, the little chads here. I actually increased their, come on camera, I actually increased their uh, divot a little bit more. So that uh, when I slide this together, it fits in there real good. So, uh, yeah, here, I'll just show you that real quick. So you can see it just slips in there real good. Um, for now it's holding. It, it sits flush. It's not going anywhere. I mean, I can't wiggle it off, so I know it's not going to get sucked through. Um, that's what these little chads are for, is to keep it from getting sucked when it's sideways, getting pulled out of that little groove, because originally that's all it was was plastic. So now i got to try to get it, drop the butterfly down in the hole there, and then line this thing up with it and see how that does. So, step Six now, I think. Uh, here we go. Okay. There it is. So it's in there now. You can see my awesome little fix I got going on there. But at least now my carburetor closes like it's supposed to and can throttle open. Because the problem was that it was just wide open. Now I actually have, you know, a bit of a close and idle and it can do what it's supposed to do under normal function. So, let's um, get this thing back on and see if she runs, and hopefully this was a successful fix. Okay, so, um, yeah, that didn't work. Um, I got it all back together again. I cranked it a few times till I got the carburetor to fill back up again, and once it started up, it, it was idling at first. It was doing good. It was doing what it's supposed to, and then it just kind of progressively started revving more and more and more, and then the next thing I know, it's just wide open again. Um, it actually pulled the butterfly valve out of my little brass thingy. It, like, twisted it out. But there's that much suction, obviously. And I, and I knew it was, you know, was going to work, maybe not. I don't know. Um, so, I'm not sure what I'm going to do from here. Um, I obviously, i got to try something different. Um, I don't know if I want to try... A, a thicker piece of metal, maybe. A thicker piece of brass, but I ran out of time. I don't, I don't have enough time to mess around with it today. The sun's getting low. I've got other things i got to do. I've already put like an hour and a half, two hours into this thing all together now. I'm um, trying to figure out how to fix it. So for the time being, I have to let it go. I've got some other things i got to take care of. And I, I want to sleep on it, basically. Sometimes, you just got to like regroup, right? Like even, even last night into today, I was, you know, thinking about how I might fix it and looking at how it was made because although the engine itself is an American company which it is it has been for years we'll just put it that way um, not all the stuff that they have on there is American the carburetor itself is made overseas and as a result it's all plastic all injection molded um, it's cheaper for them to buy it out you know over there even the gas tanks plastic injection molded and, and then slap it on their you know engine head itself, you know, so all everything else, the valves, the head, the piston, rings, bearings, all that stuff is their own stuff, but the uh, accessories like the air box and the carburetor and the fuel tank are all overseas, so um, this is the world we live in, uh, now I'm paying for it, literally, um, in time, um, versus trying to, you know, instead of trying to buy a new carburetor or buy a new butterfly kit, you know, something like $22 for the part, 
Um, I could get free shipping because we have an Amazon Prime account, but Amazon's not shipping anything right now that's not non-essential. Right? It's got to be essential items. If it's a non-essential item, we don't have time for it. So I'm working on it myself now. Um, yeah, I'm going to get back to this one. A couple days later, right? Monday now. That was like Friday when I started this project. Or Saturday, pardon me. Saturday. We had Easter Sunday. Now it's Monday. Um, so you can see where it literally twisted it. You can see where it just ripped it right out of the, the way I had it in there. It sucked the butterfly valve right out. Um, so I had the basically the su Sunday yesterday and the remainder of Saturday to think about it. And... What I came up with instead was that I'm going to create um, a plug, a wooden plug, that's going to go inside the diameter of the intake body here, the throat of the intake body here, and I'm going to cut an, a crescent moon shape out of it, similar to a slide valve. So like on a regular motorcycle, you actually have a tube, and then you have a slide valve, and then the jet goes down and it either opens up the jet and then as the slide tube slides over the opening it opens up the throat and allows air to go through. But I'm going to keep it affixed so I'm going to kind of remove about 10% of the total space here in regards to where this is normally you know, at an angle inside the opening. Um, for an idle it said it's about 10 to 12% airflow for idle. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond that, but by putting a, a wooden like plug in here with the slot running through it to let the air through, I could put the shaft back down in there to kind of hold it in place, but it can't get sucked in, it can't rotate, it can't go anywhere. Only the air can move underneath it where the jet is down here, and hopefully that'll fix the situation. So, um, let's see how this works out. Okay, here we go. So, now I've got this little setup here. So, this particular shape here is the same diameter um, or close to it as the uh, backside yoke of the carburetor back there. So down in there where the actual butterfly sits, this little plug here is about the same diameter. It's, it's tight, but it's not like super tight. And then you can see I've created a, a crescent moon shaped venturi there. So there's the intake, and then there's, you know, that much material is removed. And then it goes down and it, it opens up in the backside a little bit there. But more importantly, the original butterfly throttle valve is going to go through it like that. So just kind of capture it inside the opening of the carburetor, only allowing a certain amount of airflow through, hopefully giving me just above an idle like it was originally running when I was cutting the grass. So I'm going to put this back together and give this a test run. Okay, so there we go. You can see the little throttle mechanisms in there, and it's really just a blockade if you will but you can see there's the crescent moon shape that space underneath it is all the air that's going to be allowed to move through the um, the intake there um, and aspirate with the fuel the air air fuel mixture so um, for the time being I just have the throttle body tied down so it doesn't go anywhere I'll end up probably putting a really nice piece of stainless steel wire on there after I know this fix actually works so now I'm gonna put back on the mower and hook everything back up again and uh, give it a test run and see how she does. Ah. It's holding up pretty good. It's staying right at a steady, a little bit higher than idle, but it's holding its, its speed. Let's put it under a little force. Right on. That actually worked. So, so repair number two worked. That's just kind of crazy and stupid at the same time, but I'll take what I can get. Um, obviously, I don't have the air filter on there right now. I just All I did was remount the carburetor. You can see where the string's still tied on back there where the, the throttle body is. But that little uh, 
that little wood plug seems to be doing its job down in there. Um, choke's open because, you know, it's not cold, so it's not the choke dampering in any way. Um, it just seems to be working really good. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how long this lasts, at least until all this other virus stuff passes over and I can replace this. Because this mower needs to be replaced. The deck's broken in two places and I've, I've already spot welded it, but the front end here is coming off because it's plastic. So it's breaking loose. Um, motor's still okay. I'll probably use that in something else in the, in the future. But as far as this particular mower is concerned, um, it might make it this season. We'll, we'll see. The seasons are pretty heavy around here in Georgia. Okay, so attempt number two worked. It's working. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy. I was a little afraid that that was going to be a bit stupid, but I figure most of your motorcycles and you know higher end carburetors use use a slide, not a butterfly. So I figured I would try to cheat that and kind of simulate a, a fixed slide unit inside the opening there to um, you know restrict the airflow so that the engine could only rev so high. Um, and for now it's working. Um, I made that piece out of oak. It's out of a really nice dense piece of oak um, that I actually uh, rubbed paste wax into. I paste wax burnished it a few times uh, to really seal the grain off to make sure I didn't get any kind of like fuel regurgitation into the wood. Um, I'm not really too concerned if it swells up a little bit, but I don't want it to like get weird and rot in there or swell up and start changing the airflow or anything like that. Um, considering I need this to work for at least the next couple months at best depending on how things go. Um, I'm not really looking forward to spending, you know, 200 plus dollars on a new mower just yet. So if I can make this thing hold out until I can get some of uh, my furniture and stuff sold that I've been working on, um, you know, maybe I'll put some of that money back into getting a new mower. But for the time being, the repair worked. It seems stupid, but sometimes that's what you got to do. Um, ideally, if I had some aluminum... If I had like a like a round stock, like a maybe a three eighths billet aluminum billet round stock of some sort, um, or maybe even five eighths, I probably would have made that out of aluminum, knowing that it would have lasted longer. But the reality is that that entire carburetor is plastic. It's plastic. The wood itself is an upgrade because the wood will last longer than the plastic will, um, considering that you know they've got the ten percent ethanol in the fuel around here, and I can't get away from it. Um, so that's the fix. Um, I'm not suggesting everybody try this, but if you're like me and you kind of, you know, have limited resources, money, and of course the situation we're in right now where a lot of stuff is hard to get, like normally I would order that online, you know, either directly from the manufacturer or, you know, um, through Amazon, obviously. Um, I don't have that resource right now, so I had to fix it on the fly because my grass still needs to get cut, otherwise I end up with a jungle. I have a pond now, a really good sized pond, if you guys remember that. So we have a lot of frogs, frogs draw on snakes, I've already seen several snakes. Um, right now just, uh, you know, your standard uh, corn snakes as they call them, um, and rat snakes. You know, just the big black and, and uh, striped ones, not the venomous ones, but still, we're getting more snakes because of it. So i got to keep the grass short, um, as well as it's good for um, the water to absorb around here. So, um, anyways, that's my fix. Like I said, I don't necessarily suggest you do it unless you have to. If you're in a situation like me, if possible, try to do it out of aluminum if you can. Um, I know I didn't really show the process, but there really wasn't much of a process other than a little snip here, a little file there. Um, when I drilled that out, I ended up making, well, here, I'll show you real quick. I made a drill port so that I didn't have a center hole. So I drilled through this block first with the diameter I wanted with the hole saw. And then I put the piece of oak I wanted on the other side of it, like this, and then drilled through it. So this hole acted like a pilot hole for the uh, the hole saw, so I didn't have to run the center drill bit, so I could just create a plug. And then I drilled it from the opposite direction down through, so that it would fit inside the opening. And then use the pin as a, basically the, the original butterfly pivot as a pin. Um, and then based on the diameter, it was, um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it was 18 millimeters is what I ended up uh, calculating the diameter. Um, so I removed four millimeters of material from the bottom to create that little crescent moon there. Um, roughly between 10 to 12 percent essentially for the uh, general airflow. And I say that because it's not perfectly tight all the way around the carburetor, so it's still kind of sucking air in around that, uh, that plug I put in there. Um, but it's working. So we'll see how long it works. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little quirky, but that's sometimes that's what things are around here. I just have to fix things on the fly. And um, in this case, it wasn't something that really made me mad. So I showed you the process. 
And um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.